All righty. Well, the stage is officially set for the first Republican debate on the 2024 presidential race. Eight candidates will face off for the very first time in Milwaukee, the largest city in Wisconsin, a critical battleground state that former President Donald Trump flipped back in 2016, but President Biden flipped back in 2020. I do want to take a look at the eight Republicans that met the National Committee's qualifications. And as you can see, the GOP's big night will be missing the party's biggest name, front runner former President Donald Trump. He is opting out. He posted on Truth Social yesterday. I will be very busy tomorrow night. Enjoy. And with all that being said, thank you so much for joining me here at the live desk. I am Janae Hancock, and I do want to bring in, uh, this is Deborah Leiter. She is an associate political science professor at UMKC, and there is a lot to break down here, Deborah. So we actually just learned, I want to take a look at a video right now, that the interview former President Donald Trump taped with former Fox News host Tucker Carlson will be released just as the, the debate is set to begin tonight. It's unclear where it will air, although social media platform X is a possibility. So I do just want to start off by asking you, Deborah, do you think that this sit down interview will take away from the debate that is set to take place later on tonight? I think uh, one of the biggest contests tonight on the debate stage is going to be whether the debate stage or Trump's pre-tape interview gets more attention. But either way, I think we're going to see that some of the interview or some of the debate will be overshadowed by people who are already Trump enthusiasts turning into um, that interview rather than looking for alternatives to Trump as a candidate. Right. And you bring up a good point there. Again, I do want to take a look at some video. Um, you know, the fact that Trump will not be there tonight, his presence will definitely be felt. And before we jump full into this conversation, again, just give me your initial uh, thoughts going into the debate tonight. Well, I think the general consensus is that a lot of this debate tonight will be about who should be the second place candidate in the polls. Who is the candidate that can take on Donald Trump. And I think a lot of the contest tonight is going to be about which person can gain voter attention, donor attention, and media attention uh, to become a true contender. Because right now, Trump polling at about 50% uh, nationally uh, needs a single candidate uh, to really coalesce if there's going to be any chance of any candidate beating him. And you brought up the polls, so let's take a look at where they sit right now. This poll was just released from CBS News, and you can see there that Trump leads with 62 percent, followed by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. He's right behind him with 16 percent of the support. The rest of the candidates are in the single digits. And with Trump not being there, do you think that DeSantis can win over a lot of the support from former President Donald Trump? That's certainly his responsibility or his task tonight is to show that he is truly the, I'd say, successor candidate to, to Donald Trump. Um, and that is probably why he's got the biggest target on his back uh, on that stage compared to every other candidate. Uh, certainly right now we see that the DeSantis campaign is reporting some challenges. He's stalled or is falling in the polls. Um, his donation numbers are down. Uh, he's firing staff in his campaign headquarters. So he really needs to make gains tonight. Or we may see him like, for example, uh, former uh, governor of Wisconsin, Scott Walker, really just lose all the momentum that he's gained. And, you know, you brought up um, the fact that Dan DeSantis really needs to step it up tonight. And I know that he has kind of shied away from attacking Trump directly. Um, but the, the other candidates, we cannot say the same. And we're going to get there here in a bit. But do you think that the candidates tonight, they really need to point out where they differ from former President Donald Trump? This is the real challenge that many of these candidates face is that uh, Donald Trump remains really popular with, with much of uh, G uh, GOP voters. And so a number of the candidates have to show that they're distinct from Trump without necessarily criticizing. Now, some are. Uh, Chris Christie has been very vocal about his position as a, critic, a critic of Trump. But we're going to see a lot of interesting ways in which people try to either uh, convince voters that it's time to move on from Trump, to move on to the next stage, that's going to be DeSantis's, or that they need someone who is even more oriented towards uh, Trump positions. That's uh, Vivek, Ram uh, excuse me, Vivek Ramaswamy's uh, perspective. Um, and we're going to see people who simply are going to emphasize other areas that need expertise, um, such as Nikki Haley is going to emphasize foreign policy. 
And, you know, I do want to point out the obvious. The former president is expected to surrender to Georgia authorities tomorrow following his indictment over alleged efforts to overturn the state's 2020 election results. And I also want to point out just a quote from Chris Christie. He says, we can no longer pretend that that is that this is normal. We can't pretend that this is acceptable. Now, do you think that most um Donald Trump is going to be the main target tonight or that a lot of people are going to focus on President Biden? Uh, I think the usual case here is that we're going to see some candidates are going to focus on Trump and some candidates are going to focus on Biden. It's going to be based on what strategy they think is going to help them to win. So I suspect we're going to see folks like Tim Scott, who's really trying to be a consensus candidate, focus most of his attention on Joe Biden, trying to sort of not, uh, or sort of win over many different kinds of GOP voters. Uh, other folks like Chris Christie are running on an anti-Trump campaign and they're going to focus heavily on him. Uh, Mike Pence has been somewhat put in the position where he is uh, in the anti-Trump uh, camp. And so I think we're going to see him bring up both the need to move on, but also his contrast with Trump. I think we're going to we're going to hear his name quite a bit for a stage that he's not on. And you brought that up earlier, just the fact, even though Trump will not be there, that he may be overshadowing this debate. And then, like I mentioned, the fact that he is going to be releasing a sit down interview the same time that the debate is set to take place. Now, any attacks against Trump tonight could be used in a Biden ad in the near future. Certainly, this is always really one of the big challenges that primaries, primary elections have is that at the one point, each candidate needs to make a case for themselves. And that's often through negative campaigning. And the front runner always is the one to face the most negative attacks. However, these are all members of the same party who want their party to win. And balancing those two things can be a really challenging issue. Um, we know Taking uh, uh, 2016 as an example, Chris Christie's attack on Marco Rubio really hurt his chances uh, of winning the primary. And certainly, this balancing act really matters. Winning over enough voters in the Republican Party who like Trump but don't want to vote for him again without uh, necessarily uh, losing the appeal of those voters who didn't have an intent to vote for him. So it's a real tightrope, both for the primary and the general election. Now, Deborah, let's really break this down some more. Now, with less than five months until the Iowa caucuses jumpstart the GOP presidential nomination process, this debate is going to be a crucial opportunity for lower polling candidates. You can see that here on your screen to introduce themselves to millions of voters. And the top issues voters said that they want to hear about are plans to address inflation, violent crime and illegal immigration. Without Trump, do you think that they have more political oxygen to make their pitch and to get noticed? And certainly there's a number of candidates um, that this is really their first opportunity to get uh, any sort of national attention, uh, particularly Governor uh, Asa Hutchinson um, or Governor uh, Doug Burgum are well known within their home states, but really need to get some type of attention right now. Now, five months out, believe it or not, is actually quite a long time in primary elections. Part of the reason that we're seeing low polling for some of these figures is folks haven't had a chance to hear about them yet. And this is really where it begins. The fight for name recognition, attention, and also really critically, donor money. Um, a lot of the folks that are polling really low numbers are also not bringing in donor money. And this is their chance to convince donors that they have any chance of success. So those, especially the lowest polling uh, candidates, are the ones who are in most need of getting attention tonight. That is absolutely true. Now, I did mention the top topics or the topics that voters want to hear about, and that includes inflation, violent crime, and illegal immigration. What do you think that candidates are really going to focus on tonight? And as they're preparing right now, what do you think, where do you think their head is? So those are three issues that the Republican Party has traditionally owned. They're, by that, we mean that voters tend to associate the Republican Party as being good at managing those issues. So it's not particularly surprising that those are the big issues, both that voters want to hear about and that uh, the Republican Party or the candidates, I should say, are focusing on. 
We'll certainly hear them say a lot about that, but that's also areas where they mostly agree. I think we should pay attention to those issues, but also the areas where they don't agree. And those two big issues are going to be foreign policy and particularly the Ukraine. And also, and really importantly, the issue of abortion, which while the Republican base has been fairly consistent on its position, we're seeing a lot more conversation and a lot more uh, conflict over this issue. So I suspect that it's the issues that divide the candidates rather than unite them that are really going to actually surprisingly emerge and become important in this debate. Yeah, I definitely think that abortion will be a topic that will be brought up tonight. Um, now, we are just hours away, and this will be the first presidential debate for a lot of candidates, um, excluding uh, former pr Vice President Mike Pence as well as Chris Christie. Um, mm -hmm. But what do you think that the other candidates need to do to gain that viral attention that they need to uh, bring their support up? Well, one thing they really have to do is avoid the wrong kind of viral attention. Uh, debates are really risky. Uh, the risk of saying the wrong thing, of forgetting one of your points, of getting stuck in a uh, inability to answer is one thing they're really going to work to avoid. What they need to do, they need a viral moment that captures why they are distinct and interesting. And some of these candidates with their experience on the debate stage, you're going to be able to understand and capture that more effectively than others. Uh, especially, I think the thing you're going to want to watch for that might be that viral moment is an interplay between two candidates going back and forth, uh, an argument that shows who each candidate thinks is their key threat. So I would really watch for that. See who the candidates are targeting on the stage, and that's going to tell you how they think they're going to win and who they think could beat them. Okay, so again, we are just hours away. Who do you think, and I'm sure, like I mentioned, a lot of candidates, all of the candidates are preparing right now, but who do you think faces the most pressure going into tonight's debate? Since Ron DeSantis is the second runner-up in the polls, I think he's the one that's going to face the most attacks. Uh, but I would also pay attention to uh, uh, former Vice President Mike Pence, with the name recognition he has, even though his fundraising numbers and polling numbers aren't great, he's certainly someone that people may use as a Trump surrogate to really prove their point that they're distinct from the previous administration. All righty, Deborah, I want to thank you so much for joining me here at the live desk. Of course, KCTV5 will continue to bring you all updates as we look ahead to the first GOP um, a, a debate heading into tonight. This is a live look in Milwaukee, the largest city in Wisconsin, in a critical battleground state that former President Donald Trump flipped back in 2016. And again, that former president will not be on that stage tonight.